Hey guys, thanks for stopping by Microengineering. My name is Michael Verona, and in this video we're going to be talking all about gyroscope sensor noise analysis. So I'm going to discuss why it is important as a control systems engineer to analyze gyroscope noise. Then I'm going to talk about the different noise parameters we're going to characterize, and then finally walk you through an analysis of an actual gyroscope sensor. Um, but I got to give you a little forewarning, this video is going to be a bit technical. We're going to be throwing around a lot of statistics terms and analyzing some cool graphs. But if you're a math nerd like me, you know what you're getting yourself into when you clicked on this video. So uh, let's jump into things. Let's start off with the basics first. So a gyroscope or gyro is an angular rate sensor. Or simply put, gyros measure how fast something rotates in degrees per second or radians per second. And since I'm an aerospace engineer, let's use rockets as an example. So inside a rocket control system, the gyroscope is part of the inertial navigation system. And the inertial navigation system is arguably the most critical sensor system inside a rocket. So if we want a rocket to control itself well, we need a good gyroscope. So why do we need to analyze gyroscope noise? Well, let's say we're a company like Rocket Lab or SpaceX designing a launch vehicle. And before we even build a rocket or anything, we need to invest a significant amount of time and resources into developing an accurate vehicle simulation. And an accurate simulation will, of course, enable our engineers to rapidly iterate through designs and quickly test things out rather than building an entire rocket only to see it crash and go up in flames. You know, poof, there goes tens of millions of dollars. <laughs> um, so yeah, we need to build a really accurate simulation. And one aspect of this simulation includes sensor modeling. And since the gyro is such an important sensor on a rocket, we need to develop a very accurate and very precise gyro model. Now let's talk about the different noise parameters we're going to analyze on our gyro sensor. The two noise parameters we're going to identify are bias instability and angle random walk. And in order to determine those two parameters, we're going to perform what's called an Allen variance analysis. So Allen variance was originally derived to measure the long-term stability and noise characteristics of clock oscillators. Because if you want to keep time accurately and precisely, you need to have a very stable oscillator. Now this method uh, was later on adapted to analyze both the noise characteristics and long-term stability of gyros as well. And that's what we're going to do today. Let's start off by talking about angle random walk. Now I'm an aerospace engineer, not a statistician, so I'm not going to really describe this stuff too well. But there's plenty of resources online that can describe it much better than I can. So random walk is a mathematical model used to describe um, a random signal that kind of meanders up and down randomly. That's a really bad explanation. But anyway, here's an analogy I like to use to uh, better understand it. So let's say we are standing in a field and we flip a coin. If it's heads, we move forward. If it's tails, we move backwards. And so let's say we do that coin flip multiple times. You know, we're gonna move forward some, we're gonna move backwards some. And if we were to plot our progress forward and backwards in a histogram, we would get a distribution that looks like a bell shape or a Gaussian distribution with some standard deviation. And so therefore we classify random walk with some sort of standard deviation value. And for our gyroscope's angle random walk, instead of flipping a coin, we're going to take gyro angle measurements. Does that kind of make sense? Anyways, let's start talking about um, gyro bias instability. So all gyro sensors, no matter their grade, are going to have bias in their measurements. Now the fancy gyros, like ring laser gyros and fiber optic gyros, those guys are going to have very low biases. Whereas the cheaper MEMS gyros, those are going to have higher biases. And you know, fun fact, um, gyro bias actually changes very slowly over time. And that's called bias drift. And so the fancy ring laser gyros and fiber optic gyros, um, their bias is going to change very slowly. Their bias drift rate is going to be very low. Whereas the cheaper MEMS gyros, their biases are going to drift much faster and have a higher drift rate. And bias instability is in units of degrees per second or degrees per hour. And it is the rate at which gyro bias changes over time. And when you're shopping around for different gyro sensors, the most important parameter to pay attention to is the bias instability because it's a direct measure of how stable your gyro measurements are going to be um, long term and how well your algorithms are going to be able to estimate gyro bias. Anyways, enough of this theory stuff, let's move on to applying it towards something. 
So right here is Adafruit's 9 DOF Precision IMU. It has the FXAS2102 gyro on it, and it's actually a pretty good little gyro sensor. So let's hop on over to my computer, and I'll show you some code I wrote to perform an Allen variance analysis and determine the angle random walk and bias instability of this little gyro sensor. Let's go. All right, so all the code I'm about to show you, I'm gonna clean up and put in a GitHub repo for you guys to view and uh, repeat yourself if you'd like. So first we need to collect data from our gyro sensor. And so what I did is I wrote some Arduino code to read the I2C registers of this guy and output the data over a serial connection to my computer. And this code, uh, and this Python code just simply reads the data and writes it to a CSV file. So what I did is I put my gyro sensor on my desk and had it completely stationary and logged data at 100 hertz for six hours. You know, that's a lot of data. And I read the data and wrote it to a big CSV file. And this is what that file looks like. I think it was like 120 megabytes. There's over 2 million rows in it. It's a lot of data. <laughs> then I wrote this Python script here to compute the Allen deviation plot, which we're interested in. So as you can see, we import our data file right here as a NumPy array, convert our gyro rate data from radians per second to degrees per second. And this step right here basically um, performs Euler integration of the rate data to compute angle data. And then we pass our angle data, theta x, y, and z, into our Allen deviation function. So let's take a look at that quick. So this is the function I wrote on my own. I gained inspiration from a MathWorks article that was very, very helpful. And this is the Allen deviation algorithm right here. I'm not gonna go into detail about this, but this algorithm computes Allen variance and we're interested in Allen deviation. And so just remember that the square root of variance is standard deviation. So this algorithm right here computes the Allen variance and then we output the square root of the Allen variance, which is Allen deviation. And so that's what we get right here. And then we do that for both the X, Y, and Z axes, and then plot our data on a log scale plot. And every Allen deviation plot you look at is gonna be on a log scale. So let's take a look at what our data looks like. So this is an Allen deviation plot for our gyro sensor right here. Pretty neat. All this time and effort to making this big plot right here. So as you can see on the x-axis, it's a log scale. Same thing with the y-axis. The x-axis is um, time in seconds, and the y-axis is the Allen deviation in degrees per second. The blue line is our x-gyro data, the orange line is our y-gyro data, and the green line is our z-gyro data. So let's start off by talking about this linear region right here. So when you look at an Allen deviation plot, if the, the slope of this line right here is negative 0.5, that means your um, sensor has Gaussian white noise in it. So what I did is I took the gyro X data here and curve fitted a line with a slope of negative 0.5 and plotted it against that. And uh, this is what we get right here. So as you can see, the slope of our line matches negative 0.5, which means our gyro has Gaussian white noise in it. And that's important to know because all of the um, all you know sensor fusion mathematics assumes that you know like with Kalman filters and extended Kalman filters um, assumes that um, your sensors have Gaussian white noise in them. And if it isn't, you know, that assumption falls apart. But that's good to know our sensor has Gaussian white noise. It's kind of confusing. Next, I want to talk about how we compute angle random walk from an Allen deviation plot. So um, angle random walk is measured in degrees per root hour. Bit of a strange unit, but just deal with it. So in order to compute that from an Allen deviation plot, what we do is we go to tau equals um, one second or 10 to the one. And I'm gonna do it for the blue line here. And so when tau equals one, the Allen deviation is 0 0.026 degrees per second. And in order to compute our 
um, angle random walk, we do 0 0.026 and multiply it by 60. And so therefore, our gyro angle random walk is 1.56 degrees per root hour. Bit of a strange unit, but just deal with it. Next, I'll show you how to compute bias instability from our um, Allen deviation plot here. And bias instability is measured in units of degrees per hour. I'm going to use the blue line again. And we're going to go down to its minimum right here. So that's about right here or so. So our minimum occurs at tau equals 129. And our y value, our deviation, is 0 0.005 degrees per second. And so then, we'll, so we'll do 0 0.005 time, or sorry, divided by 0.664. And this 0.664 number comes from some IEEE standard. I can't remember. There's a math equation where a constant works out to this value. Just deal with it. So we're going to do 0 0.005 divided by 0.664 and multiply this by 3600. And so therefore, our gyro bias instability is 27.1 degrees per hour. That's a little bit tricky, but um, you know, whatever. 27 degrees per hour is ha halfway decent for a cheap men's gyro like mine. And as you can see, the, the green line here, our gyro Z data is even better. So let's re recompute this for the gyro Z data. So again, we'll go down to the minimum here. That's about right here or so. And the Y value is 0 0.003. So we'll do 0 0.003 divided by 0.664 and multiply that by 3600. Our Z gyro bias instability is 16.3 degrees per hour, which again for a cheap MEMS gyro like the one I have is actually pretty good. So yeah, I just showed you how to ensure that our gyro has Gaussian white noise, um, how to compute angle random walk from an Allen deviation plot, and also gyro bias instability from an Allen deviation plot. So I'm sure that was a bit confusing. Be sure to drop a comment down below if you have any questions and I'll try my best to answer them. And um, I'd like to make another video comparing these parameters between different gyros. So this Adafruit IMU is um, not commonly used out there, but gyros like the MPU6050 and the BNO055 are used much more frequently in projects. And I'd like to see um, how this one compares to the other ones and how they compare between each other. So um, that's probably going to be the next video I'll make. So uh, yeah, I'm sure your brain is about toasted right now. So um, I'll see you later.